Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Shi Jun Wang. Um, today's video, we are very excited to introduce two very excellent pianists. One is Rose. Um, I think she's from Taiwan and who lives in the Bay Area. Um, I, I can only guess that she's from Taiwan because when she sent me emails, uh, she was using the traditional Chinese instead of the simplified version which people from the mainland uses. Um, and then the second pianist today, uh, we have Yaya uh, from Tunisia, Africa. Um, I was really quite amazed and impressed by these two excellent players. who sent us um, their playing. So for Rose, um, she played this very sensitive middle section and really um, very professional, um, very sensitive, a lot of emotions inside. Um, I think I don't have much to say. And like I said, I was deeply, deeply impressed by the level of playing. Um, I have a couple of comments um, since I will be showing um, the clips so that everyone can listen and can compare. So my first uh, comment is the transition from this part yeah. So we want this C and F, this chord, when it comes in it has a dramatic, really a, tr a big difference between these. Yeah? I think the way um, Rose played, yeah, it was, it was a little bit different, but not by much. So, and of course it's very hard to show since you're only playing starting on this part instead of having already a big section for the smarzando, but still change the way playing up in this section and then down here. And my biggest suggestion really, really is not for the right hand. I think the right hand really did an excellent job. You were listening to every single note. My biggest comment is on the use of your left hand. And I think it's um, many things to, to name. The main point is the awareness of how your left hand ends a phrase, okay? Very often I would hear your left hand accelerate towards the end. And there is a good practical reason for it because a lot of times you have to travel down two octaves. Yeah, so if you don't want to delay that, you have to... Yeah? And really interestingly, um, when you have the next, the next downbeat closer 
to the previous phrase, you don't rush. But um, for, for things like this, yeah, you, you would rush and you know, uh, yeah. So, uh, of course, there is a solution and it has to take a lot of practice. The solution is to watch those places and ask your left hand to not rush. travel quicker between these yeah so the reason you were rushing is because you you wanted to create more time for you to travel slower but we can't afford to borrow from here comments I have is in this uh, last section that you played uh, from major uh, 82 to uh, major 90 um, and it's a lovely voicing that you did and I don't know maybe that's from my video before or maybe you knew this already we have this lovely second yeah, this second uh, voice um, but however, when we emphasize a voice or a second voice, a inner voice, it is important to remember we have to shape it as well. We can't just play three loud or deep notes and they're exactly the same. Yeah, so. Yeah, somehow we have to. Do and in this case, we, we, I would like them to do a diminuendo so that it's not three times exactly the same like a bell. Okay. Um, and one last thing, one last thing, and it's really just it's personal taste. Um, in between measure 73, 74, and 75, I do think... Um, here, we should somehow have a, a bigger break between the phrases because the that's one pair. Yeah. So I think how you did it is you did a bigger change in the middle of 74 but for me it's logic more logical to to do something like that but again um like i said it, it really has it doesn't uh change the big picture it's just a personal preference, but really bravo on your playing. And I think you're uh, already teaching, but you stayed uh, in such a good shape for, for this. And I hope, and I think we hope that you will send us more videos uh, of, of your really impressive playing. Thank you for participating. Um, and uh, I hope uh, you will continue to watch the series. Um, we will talk to you soon.
next participant is Yaya from Tunisia and he did this part. Yeah, this big climax, the first time this happens. Um, and I happen, I have the privilege to know Yaya a little bit more. He is now right now working on his application uh, for River State uh, University as a freshman. And of course, in the midst of the COVID situation, we cross our fingers, we hope um, everything will go smoothly. And as a university, we will try our best to support him financially and in every other way for him to come and study in the United States. Um, and when I was talking with him, I was really amazed how for him, he spent most of the time self-taught. Uh, he basically learned this uh, from watching videos, from just teaching himself. So bravo on, on your dedication and on your um, devotion. Um, so uh, really uh, the most important thing I think for you to remember, there are two things. Number one, you need to have a very loose wrist. Yeah, from the playing and from the sound, I know the piano is not in the top form, but I think your wrist is a little bit uh, tight. So it sounded almost like this. Yeah. So there is no movement after you play. And you may ask me, how can the movement after a note have anything to do with the sound of it, yeah? Because we know the mechanic of the keyboard instrument, you can't change much after you play, but it greatly affects how you play the next note and how you prepare this note. You see, yeah, when you lose all these, it gives you better preparation, better support for the next note, okay? And the same thing goes with left hand. It will also help you to bring this wave-like shapes much better. Um, and the other thing I want you and all the uh, viewers to really keep in mind is um, we know this French way started I think maybe from uh, Africa Croteau that we don't place the left hand and right hand together and it's a very good tool for the expressiveness of, of Chopin however you have to be aware that when you will be using it because most of the case that I see is students are constantly using this. But they are not aware so that they abuse the uses, the use usage of this. Um, maybe on one chord or two on the climax, I would have that. But even if we're listening to Koto, he doesn't do this every single measure, yeah? So still, most of the time, we play them, place them together. We can do something like that. And uh, interestingly enough, when I pointed that out uh, with Facebook, with Yaya, he, he replied, uh, after I pointed out, he realized, but when he was playing, he did not realize. So this is exactly um, what I want everyone to pay attention to. Um, it, it's a little bit addictive to do that, especially after you hear a very excellent pianist performing that way and you remember one or two chords they did that and you start to use that in every chord 
So um, that's a, such a good reminder for us. Okay, and again, we thank Yaya for participating, and we hope uh, you will send us other videos of your playing, and good luck with the application. Uh, I hope that I will personally see you in the fall in Utah, uh, and let's keep in touch. Okay, thank you for watching everyone, and I hope um, people out there, if you want, send me your playing so that I can do this uh, kind of a communication with this new way, this new platform uh, with my YouTube viewers. See you next week. Thank you for watching.